Kazakhs have a tradition when a young girl is presented with jewelry, especially earrings. This means that she became engaged. From the moment when the ceremony of Sergasalu was already held, a young woman realizes that she will soon leave her father's house and will be welcomed in another family. Hello, you're watching Kazakh Live the Stir program with Tamara Sar. Today in the program we have the guest Anarbik Mirzakhazı, the professor at Al Farabi Kazakh National University. Welcome to our studio. Hello. So let's show the ride in the form of performance. We will give some information about the meaning of this tradition. Please tell us about this ride more in details. Thank you. The ritual of engagement Sirgasalu is a nation tradition and originates from the depths of centuries. There is a saying that traveler's goal is to reach his destination. The goal of a young woman is to get married. The woman's mission is to create a family, to give birth to children, to keep the hearth of a home. Kazakhs always addressed this issue with great responsibility. This is a common law. <laughs> Marriage as a term is a continuous union of a man and a woman as husband and wife under all kinds of conditions of life. <laughs> the family is the foundation of the social structure. Therefore, young women waited for this moment. In order to indicate the status of girls, their headdresses were decorated with feathers of an eagle owl. There are certain rules concerning the way of wearing feathers. Young women wore takiya, or a skull cap. If it's worn from one side, it meant that she is still free. If the takiya is worn straight, on the top of the head, this meant that the young woman is already engaged and the future groom is known. This meant that the young woman was already engaged. From what age was this possible? This happened in different ways, in different cases. There were cases when parents of a little baby girl already agreed on future engagement with another family, and she grew already being engaged. Such co-parents-in-law were honorably called as Bisakuda. Yes, there were true cases, for example, when long-standing co-parents-in-law once again wished to renew and strengthen family ties between their families by a new marriage. In such a situation, they asked parents of the girl to give their daughters in marriage and presented earrings to her, and this served as a kind of mark that this girl is already engaged. You're right, people sought to ask in marriage a girl from families they knew well, from decent and respected families in society. It is rooted in the minds of people. Therefore, the groom's parents sometimes talk to him and sometimes even without him, ask the parents of the chosen girl to give their daughter in marriage. In general, what kind of earrings were presented during the engagement? In my opinion, there was no strict criteria. Of course, it's desirable that this jewelry is made of precious metals. It showed the groom's intention. Everything was dependent on family's financial capabilities. Indeed, this ride does not specify what kind the presented earrings should be. You have just mentioned about the custom of decorating a girl's headdress with eagle owl feathers and presenting earrings for engagement. All this comes from the groom part, and who put on the earrings to the girl, the groom's mother or her elder daughter-in-law. Ethnographic studies which were conducted by scientists with the aim to explore the Asian traditions have shown that these rites have their own system and a certain sequence. According to their results, in most cases, elder daughters-in-law put on earrings to a young bride. 
Yes, you're right. Elder daughters-in-law presented earrings for engagement. At the first stage of engagement, the groom's parents did not come to the home of the bride. Also, the delegation included people who were in good relations with respected people in the village of the bride, or who were relatives, in a certain way to the bride's part. Only few people came from the groom's side because they didn't want to bother the bride's relatives with a need to host and accommodate guests. Allah. The most important thing here is to create conditions for young people to meet and get acquainted closer. Initially, negotiations were held between the two sides. With this aim, authoritative and influential people were gathered. After all, a wedding is not only a marriage of the newlyweds. First of all, it's the conclusion of the union between two tribes. Therefore, representatives of the older generation at such events gave warm, parting words. Engagement wasn't attended by many people. Just two or three people participated in the engagement ceremony. That his engagement was attended by few people only. Yes, with the participation of close relatives. Afterwards, other people learned all the details from each other. As the news about the engaged girl spread very fast, people quickly knew about the new groom, his family, and his well-being. It was very interesting for other villagers. People attach great importance to the Sargasalu ceremony. After the engagement is held, changes occurred in the girl's life. Even her character changes as well. At that time, there were no social networks and the bride got used to the idea of a future marriage gradually. Every time she saw her earrings, she imagined her married life and what she would wear. She dreamt of life with her future husband. Only close relatives took part in the ceremony of engagement. They were served rich dishes. Then the news about future marriage spread across the village. At the first stage of the engagement, the groom's side expressed their initiative to talk and make agreements. That is, immediately the theme of engagement was not touched upon. After an agreement was reached between the parties and the bride's father gives his consent, the cattle were slaughtered and a traditional dish was arranged. Then earrings were presented to the bride and the decision was made on marriage. When the two families are aimed to reach agreement, they explain each other their identities, solve issues on future marriage and its peculiarities. Therefore, such meeting was held with participation of few relatives. I want to continue your words. Why earrings were exactly presented? It turns out that people believe that earrings impose a special responsibility on the girl, change the manner of her behavior in society and improve her gait. After all, a free girl who is not engaged can ride a horse and play mischievous games with the boys and show pampering. The engaged girl is not allowed to do that. In general, it's believed that when an exemplary girl walks in the street, even the ringing of her earrings wouldn't be heard. This was considered the standard of social behavior for the girl of that time. Therefore, the meaning of presenting earrings to a girl is very deep. They say metaphorically the ringing of earrings woke me up. Yes, the sound of earrings is very gentle and melodic. In general, attaching importance to such subtle and elegant items, in my opinion, reflects the Kazakh people's worldview, the fine lines of national consciousness. It shows the rich inner world of the Kazakh people and how much they respect their Asian traditions. It shows also girls' good manners and well-breeding the ability to walk silently without making the earrings sound, 
requires a certain skill. Even I can do it silently while I'm turning my head. It's impossible to shake earrings without their ringing. And people believe that the ringing of earrings keeps away from the evil eye and word of evil spirits. Also, it's believed that the sound of earrings preserves from people's evil intentions while she's preparing to become a daughter-in-law. Therefore, it's not only a sign of engagement, but a sign of good belief. I will continue further. Two, three months or even up to six months can be passed after the engagement. During this time, if the bride sees something that she does not like in the behavior of her future groom, then she can return the earrings and refuse the engagement. In case the groom changes his mind about getting married, then by paying compensation, he could terminate the engagement. In response, the girl's parents returned various gifts previously presented by the groom. Therefore, it's up to two young people whether they certainly want to get married or not. After all, newlyweds should be certain in creating a new family, in starting new life, and bringing up children. It's known that everything requires time. For example, when a man starts to build a house, he first builds the foundation and waits until it's over completely. Likewise, it should dry. It's important to emphasize that according to the custom, after the completion of the engagement, the bride was allowed a certain period of time to think and make a decision. She was given time to think well and get to know closer her groom. Well, Anar, thank you very much for coming to our studio. You dedicated time to us and shared quite interesting information. I think our viewers received much knowledge today. Great, and we continue our program in the wedding salon Svadba that Kizet. Now we will welcome another guest. Ulzhan Ainakulova is an honored artist of Kazakhstan. Welcome, Ulzhan. Thank you. We're glad that you shared your time with us today. We will discuss deeply the theme of Sraha Salu. And the first question, do you remember your engagement? No. At that time, people didn't hold such ceremonies of Sarha Salu and engagement. In the Soviet times, such celebrations weren't held. There wasn't the ceremony of engagement and becoming co-parents-in-law. Everything was simple. Two young people got married and celebrated the wedding. Such were the times. People didn't follow Asian traditions. Then after some time, people in the villages began to hold the ceremony of becoming co-parents in law and engagement. In general, at that time, people didn't have the opportunities to hold Sarasalu ceremony. People lived through hard times. Yes, at that time we didn't completely follow our traditions and customs. Do you regret that you weren't engaged according to the tradition? Presently our customs and national traditions are revived and people follow them. When I see it, I'm happy of course. The traditions of engagement Sarha Salu ceremony have been preserved in Mangastau region in southern Kazakhstan. In remote areas of certain regions, in some Russian regions inhabited by the Kazakhs. 
you and the king. Of course, I participate in such events. My children get married, and I'm happy to see the revival of such traditions. Do you like this ritual? Sure. Why do you like it? First, I'm concerned over my future co-parents-in-law. I'm anxious what kind of family would my daughter enter in, or where would my son get the bride from. From the moment I hear that the co-parents-in-law are eager to come and present earrings to my daughter, I feel very emotional. I think much about my daughter's future life, how she will be welcomed in a new family. Nowadays, people hold large-scale celebrations in every ritual separately. For instance, they celebrate separately the engagement ceremony, the bride seeing off ceremony, arrival of co-parents-in-law. Even Sarga Salu ceremony is celebrated at a large scale. So people spend a lot of money for such celebrations. In the old days, according to the legends and fairy tales, people held 30 days of games and competitions. And 40 days of feast and fun. It was possible then. You said that presently people hold celebrations in a modern way. Even someone celebrates the Rasalu ceremony so beautiful that they order special saukilia for the bride, decorated and put on appropriate earrings to the bride. Of course, it's wonderful when people attach great importance to such rites. They apply modern styles and rules. If someone has the opportunities, they celebrate separately every ritual. Everything needs to be done according to one's financial capabilities. If people have the opportunities, why not? Sure. Yes, I agree. If people have enough financial opportunities, they can celebrate ceremonies largely. As for the saying that in the old days people celebrated 30 days of games and contests and 40 days of feast and fun, this related to wealthy families. People from across the region gathered in the village of the rich man who had a toy. <laughs> Poor people had the opportunity to eat and relax in those days of feast and fun. An illusion of happiness was created because a well-fed person will produce a feeling of euphoria and endorphins are released, the so-called hormone of happiness. Therefore, all the people in the village, starting from a child, celebrated the Sarha Salu rite for up to 40 days, and everyone was happy. Thanks to the wedding, poor people found the opportunity to eat hearty. Presently, people live in prosperity. Thank God. Peace reigns in our country. People have a lot of opportunities to realize their dreams. They can achieve everything they want. They travel a lot and have experience. They adopt new methods and try them while celebrating significant events. Women wear different kinds of earrings. Earrings are made of various precious metals with various stones, such as diamond in the form of jewelry. But people always look for something exceptional. Did someone present all earrings that were passed down from grandmothers or mothers? I think people practiced it. In the old days, such earrings were given to a young bride who had just arrived in the village of the groom. The groom's mother or grandmother had an intention to present their precious earrings to their young daughter-in-law to express love to her while welcoming her in a new family. Yes, it's very wonderful when the earrings are passed down from generation to generation as heirloom. There is some sacred meaning when the groom's mother presents her earrings to her daughter-in-law as a heirloom. Such earrings can convey the history of the whole family passing down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, they can be presented as a heirloom. Yes, safety in accurately preserving the earrings. This is the continuity of generations. It would be wonderful. Uja, before saying goodbye to you, I invite you to an improvised celebration of Sirha Salu Right. Sometimes in the studio we hold such events, a demonstration of the rights. We held, for example, here in the studio the right of Tusao Kisu and other rituals. Now is the time of Sirha Salu ceremony, the right of putting earrings to the bride. So the co-parents-in-law arrived in the village, they are going to put on earrings to a bride. The bride's family is hosting an event with a small number of participants. Only close relatives and neighbors of the bride's family have gathered here. After a festive dastarkhan, the bride of showing the bride is held. The bride comes out surrounded by elder daughters-in-law. The groom's relatives presented gifts for showing the bride. It's called Kurimdik. Therefore, many women wanted to take part in the rite of showing the bride, expecting to receive good presents. After Kurimdik is presented to elder daughters in law, women gathered in another room to have. Kurjan Ashul ritual. Kurjan was prepared by the groom's side to the bride's relatives. Women were presented with gifts. After that, the ceremony of Sargasalu was held. Today we will demonstrate the improvised ceremony. Ojan will act as the relative from the groom's side and will present earrings to our beautiful bride. We want to show the sacred and beautiful meaning of this tradition. Now we see our bride. What a beautiful bride. Well, let's start. What do you have in hands? There are the earrings for the future bride. Presently, earrings are presented in such a beautiful box, trimmed in velvet tenderly in the form of saukilia in the Kazakh style in general. It is decorated beautifully, so earrings are presented in such a modern way. It's a very beautiful box in the form of saukilia. I will hold it. Give the old earrings to elder daughter-in-law. She will present them to young girls. Let's put on earrings. First, put on the earring on the right side. May God bless you. Be a wise wife. Amen. Amen. Let her be happy in a new family. Let her family be large. We have all the good wishes for you. I congratulate you. Accept my congratulations. I wish you happiness. Shashu. May these earrings bring you happiness. Amen. Let it be so. So the ride is done. The earrings were put on the bride. A grandmother will give her parting words and blessing. Amen. Let the bride be happy. May their love be strong. May the newlyweds be happy. Let there be many children. Amen. Amen. Let the bride be happy. We wish every engaged girl to be as tender as the sound of earrings. Let her never forget 
that she is the keeper of the family's hearth. This was Kazakh Live Disturb program with Tamara Sar. See you soon.